If you guys want coins for FC24, make sure you check out MMOEXP.com. Their link is down in the description. They're very fast, they're very cheap, they're very reliable. And if you use my code REMA, you can get yourself a lovely 5% discount. So, what's up guys? It's Ash here and welcome back to a brand new video. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day, evening, whatever time it is for you. And uh, yeah, today we have some 4231 custom tactics and player instructions to help you out in FC24. Uh, I just want to apologize that there won't be any gameplay in this video. It's a bit late when I'm recording this and I don't have too much time and I want to get this out. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys can understand that. Tomorrow we'll have gameplay as normal. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just before we get into the video though, guys, I would very much appreciate it if you could drop this a thumbs up to, as it does really help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Also sub to the channel if you are new so you never miss out on any videos. And don't forget to turn on those notifications so you are notified when a video is posted. And with all that aside, guys, let's get right into today's video. Alright then guys, so going through the custom tactics, um, for the defensive style guys, we always pop this on balance, it's the same with every formation and tactic I do, uh, the reason I do this is because it does give us the best control over our defence, so when we want to press our opponent for example, we can do that, and then when we want to drop off and maybe be that bit more passive, we can also do that, so defensive style on balance does just give us the best control, that being said, if you guys want to use pressure tactics because you're more comfortable with that, you can go right ahead. Now moving on to the defensive width guys, um, I would say the, the range you want to go between, in my opinion, is from 40 to 50. Now the reason I suggest this is because it gives you a nice, narrow and compact defense when you have something in between this range, uh, which means it's very difficult for your opponent to attack through the middle and pass right through you essentially. Um, but the reason I think this is the sweet spot and you don't want to go any lower is because you still need to have good coverage of the wider areas. So, you know, you need to be able to cover that area in case an opponent goes down the wing which they so often do so I think 45 the sweet spot but anywhere from 40 to 50 I think will be fine now moving on to the depth guys uh, you can pretty much use whatever you want for the depth um, there are a couple of suggestions I can make if you struggle a bit defensively and you need a bit of help you can use 71 depth now what this does is it gives you this automatic press from the AI where the AI basically does everything for you they'll press your opponents like crazy congest the middle area of the pitch and make it a nightmare for your opponents to try and play through so if you like that and that's something you want you can use 71 depth um, if you're like me and you have you know a bit more skill when you're defending you know you feel quite confident and you want to be a bit more manual you can go from like 60 to 65 now the reason I suggest this is because it does give you you know that that higher defensive line that you might want but you just have a bit more control over when you press your opponent you know so you still have that height line you're just a bit more in control if this is still too high for you guys you can lower it even more and that is absolutely fine so just pick a depth that you are comfortable with now for the build-up play guys I always recommend and balance regardless of the type of buildup you like to use. Now the reason I say this is because every one of these individual settings apart from balance completely suck. You know if you use for example slow buildup your players just don't move at all like the AI is terrible uh, and it doesn't help you build up slowly. The same way with fast buildup your players just move around kind of like maniacs and that doesn't help you either. So balanced is just the most controlled and the most suited for every type of style in my opinion. Now for the chance creation guys, uh, direct passing is an absolute must in my opinion, especially on the new gen version of the game, because it's the only way to consistently create chances and score against people in this game. The reason direct passing is so important is because what happens is your attacker will make these runs and then your opposition defender will follow the attacker that's making the run and then once the defender has overcommitted to the run that the attacker has made, your attacker will then do like a track back movement so it creates space between that defender and your attacker so that you can pass across or cut back to them. So it feeds into that cutback rap meta of FC24, but you pretty much have to use this, otherwise you're going to struggle to score, especially against those higher end opponents. Now for the attacking width, guys, you can pretty much use whatever you want. All you really need to know is the lower the width, um, you know, the more narrow your attack is and vice versa. So just pick a width that you're comfortable with. I use 55 at the moment because, you know, I want a bit of width. I just don't want it to be crazy wide either. So this has been working all right. But again, 
again, just change it to whatever you want. For the players in the box, guys, I pop this on six. The reason I do this is so we can get a few players into that penalty area, but we don't overcommit to the point where if we lose out on possession, we're not always going to get counter-attack. So this is what I prefer. You guys might prefer something different, and that's fine. For the corners, I pop this on two. This is so, you know, if I want to cross it, I do have a couple of players in the box, but I can also play it short. And again, it's kind of similar to the players in the box where we don't want to overcommit because, you know, we don't want to get counter-attacked all the time. For the free kicks, because I don't really cross the ball from them, I either just shoot them or play them short. I just have it on one because I don't really need to commit players at the pitch if I'm not going to use them. But again, just do what you want with that. Now, for the player instruction, guys, um, the striker is very basic. We pop them on stay central and get in behind. These are pretty standard instructions for a striker. Uh, the reason being is that the most effective in this game. Stay central is very useful because it ensures that you have that focal point at top. It means they're not going to get lost, drift out wide because you don't really need them to do that. You have wide cams and fullbacks to cover that area. So you want them to be in the middle so that you can rely upon them. I also highly recommend get in behind uh, on this game because it's very important against those people that are using the pressure tactics and the 71 depth. Uh, what I mean by this is if you use mixed attack and your opponent is using like 71 depth or pressure, your player just won't really move at all. You know, it's really, really annoying. So you have to force the runs out of them. And the best way to do that and beat the press is by using get in behind. Now, for the wide cams, guys, we pop them on comeback and defense, get into the box for cross. Now, the reason we pop them on comeback and defense is because it will make it defend in that 4-4-2 shape, which many people like. Now, the reason this is so good is because it makes it very difficult for your opponent to attack, especially down the wing. Um, so when you put these players on comeback and defense, they will come back to sit next to those CDMs and defend that area. So it doesn't give your opponent any space. So you'll have good coverage of those central areas with the two CDMs and then also good coverage of those wider areas with the right mid and left mid or the right cam and left cam essentially. So that's why we do that and then get into the box across so these players do not hesitate in getting into the penalty area. For the central cam, I just pop them on get into the box across. This is just so again, they're not hesitant in getting into the the area but everything else i just leave them alone on because i don't want to restrict them all that much now for the left cdm guys i use a more defensive minded player so this is somebody that is just going to stay back basically be that defensive rock and bring that balance to the midfield i don't suggest using two really attacking minded players in these cdm roles because again you do need that balance you do need that player that can give you that security and help you out at the back so again on this player just pop them on stay back cut passing lanes and cover center stay back because like i said you don't want them flying forward cut passing lanes means they're always going to look to intercept, uh, intercept those passes it's made even better if the player has that intercept plus play style and then cover center to cover that middle area because like i said we have the wide cams or the ram and the lamb coming back to cover the wings so we don't need this player to do that moving on to the right cdm guys i use a more balanced or box to box type player in this position so this is somebody that will attack and defend have a bit more of a free role and basically just do what they want so on this player we just leave them alone to let them do that the only thing we change is cover center so like the other cdm they'll cover that central area as opposed to the wings guys now moving on to the fullbacks whichever one is your most attacking one in my case it is the right back i suggest popping them on balanced attack and overlap this is because the 4231 narrow is a narrow formation of course so sometimes you need that extra width you need that wider option so with your more attacking fullback put them on that balanced overlap to give you that extra width to give you that wider option and you know you might be able to utilize that width pass plus for example just makes it very difficult for your opponent to defend and then for the other fullback guys the more defensive one pop them on stay back and overlap so you always have at least three defenders back at a time but when you send them on that overlapping run forward they'll give you that extra width as well for the two center backs of course we leave them alone and the keeper we also leave them alone but yeah guys they're my tactics and instructions for the 4231 if you guys have enjoyed or found this useful please be sure to drop it a like sub to the channel if you are new and don't forget to turn on notifications and with all that aside guys hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and i'll catch you all in the next video peace out guys take care